Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly COVID-19 update. This is our update for the week of April 29th, 2020. I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics for DAT, and I'm joined by Ned Damon, who is our Principal Data Scientist at DAT. Ned, do you want to give us an overview of what we're going to talk about this week? Certainly. So we're going to begin by talking about um, the supply and demand update, both from the load to truck perspective, as well as the independent loads and trucks, and also our MCI data. Uh, then we're going to have a guest on here to talk about uh, how carriers are being affected by this difficult market. Um, I think it's going to be really informative. Um, then I'm going to be going over the weekly forecast, um, not only this week's forecast, but also prior weeks, so you can see how the forecasts have been tracking. Uh, and then finally, we're going to have um, our Q&A question for this week that I think will be uh, quite interesting. Um, Ken? Thanks, Ned. Um, just a, a quick heads up, we're going to skinny down our slides this week to make room for our guests um, and keep this brief. We know your time is very valuable. Um, you can find the entire update for the week at DAT.com slash COVID-19. Um, so pivoting right to it, we're going to focus on dry van um, from a load to truck perspective this week. The trends are very similar in reefer. Um, and again, we're just trying to kind of expedite, expedite things here. Um, so this is the third week in a row where the load to truck ratio um, is below one which again means there were more loads posting, or there were more trucks posting um, than there were loads available to go around. Um, a little bit of the silver lining is that we're seeing more of a bottoming, kind of a firm um, sense of a bottom here in this market uh, with things looking up as we head into produce and spring shipping season. Breaking out the loads in trucks individually, we can see that this is the third in a row, again, that load volumes have been bottomed out compared to truck posts, which are down for the second straight week, but we suspect that's largely due to diminished loads uh, to go around. I'm gonna pivot real quick to um, market conditions index. So again, this is the new um, product by DAT that helps um, compare markets. Um, it helps show tight and loose capacity markets and is a great leading indicator of where pricing is headed. Uh, so this was the map as of last week. You can see a lot of blue indicating very um, soft markets. The only real bright spots here were ports. If you look at um, LA, Houston, Miami, Baltimore, um, and some produce areas, but again, not very much. I'm gonna pivot to this week because we start to see some color for the first time in a long time. Uh, we start to see Southern California, South Texas, Florida, even into Georgia starting to light up a little bit. And a lot of this is what we're starting to see some of the onset of produce season. It would be more apparent on the refrigerated side, but again, starting to finally see um, some color in this map is a bit of a bright spot in what's been an otherwise dreary picture. Uh, I'm gonna turn to spot rates really quick. And again, we're gonna focus on vans for this week because um, the trends in the reefer side are again, very similar. Looking at spot rates, um, not a very pretty picture here. We're at a uh, five-year low. Um, testing, if not below levels that we experienced in the freight recession and industrial slowdown of 2016. We have seen those losses decelerate a bit, um, but again, we're, we're not showing as much of a sign of a bottom as are on the load to truck side. Given how predictive load to truck and MCI are of race, we would expect a bottoming of, uh, impact and then an upturn due to seasonality, but again, it's just not present in the data yet. Um, pivoting real quick to ultra short term, we talked last week about there being support for $1.35 a mile less fuel on the dry van side. Seems like we're going to um, undershoot that a little bit. Um, but again, seasonality, we're expecting it to take over. And Ned's going to talk about that a little later in the modeling. Um, but again, we're looking at um, hopefully a bottoming trend over the next couple of weeks here. Um, so to answer one of the most uh, prevalent questions or comments we've received this week um, about how spot rates are determined um, in, the, in the spot market. Um, we're gonna be joined by a special guest who has experience both on the analytics side as well as on the um, contract and spot carrier side. We're joined by Dean Croak. Dean was the chief insight officer at the online media company FreightWaves. And uh, in addition to being a um, well-respected and seasoned freight analyst, um, he actually is an owner operator with over 2 million miles behind the wheel of a truck. So um, thank you very much for joining us this morning, Dean. Hey, Ken. Thanks for having me. So diving right in and addressing some of the questions we've been getting um, in our analytics team at DAT, how are spot rates set in the market? 
It's a great question. It's one we've had a lot this week. Spot markets are you know, usually set by laws of supply and demand. In the freight market, it's simply the, uh, determined by the ratio of the number of trucks in the market compared to the number of uh, loads in the market. Um, so when you have an imbalance, uh, when you've got load volumes that are high and truck capacity is tight, like it was in 2018, spot rates were very high. Uh, the reverse is the case now. Uh, what we've got now is load volumes are falling to unprecedented level and we've got a lot of truck capacity still in the market. So as a result, spot market rates tend to decline. Yeah, and we're definitely seeing them decline right now. Um, are you, you know, from your perspective, are the, are the declines purely driven by a, a lack of a demand out there to move freight? You know, it's a good question. Most of this, um, you know, the trucking industry is very cyclical. So, you know, we had a freight recession in 2016 that lasted for a while. It came off the back of very high $4 a gallon diesel prices. Uh, the market has ups and downs. Um, you know, there's ups, there's good times, there's high rates. Uh, our job as operators is to make money in good times and bad and be profitable. Uh, right now, the market is turned against uh, carriers. It's great for shippers. Brokers are sort of in the middle looking forward to expand their margins. So, um, you know, right now it's a function of unprecedented levels of uh, decreased demand because we're all at home, uh, not ordering and buying and traveling like we normally would. And you've still got a, a relatively high number of trucks in the market looking for, you know, roughly the same freight volumes year over year, although we've had this big spike early uh, March and April, and now it seems to be coming back to sort of normal levels uh, as we head into May. Yeah, it's an excellent point. You know, we think about rates being low and, and another one of the things that um, brokers, shippers and carriers are dealing with, it seems, is volatility right now. Um, you mentioned the rates jumped up to unseasonable levels in March and are now cratering down into April leading into May. So, you know, what are some of the factors that kind of shift pricing power from a shipper or a broker over to a carrier and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, shippers have had pricing power for the last three or four months as there's been, you know, excess capacity in the market. It's just simple laws of supply and demand. Um, it gets a little bit more nuanced when you start talking about certain equipment types like refrigerated trailers that are needing to move more commodities that we are buying at home rather than going to restaurants. So, you know, food service industry, trucking operators are, are not delivering to restaurants and catering companies. Uh, so you're seeing the supply chain shift. So that's also a driving force. You've also got imbalance in, in lane density. So a lot of carriers are running into really big markets where there's excess demand, like New York City, Atlanta, Chicago. But of course, those cities are in lockdown and there's manufacturing uh, data showing that they're not producing as much as they were before. So there's less freight to come out. So you've got an imbalance in rates going into markets that are normally, you know, headhaul markets. They're turning into backhaul markets because there's less freight being produced coming out. There's a lot of market forces right now that are kind of at unprecedented levels. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of the traditional head haul, back haul paradigms are being shifted, I think. You know, we're hearing that quite a bit from um, some of our carrier partners. Um, you know, as we navigate through this, what are some things that owner operators or, you know, smaller carriers can do um, to best position themselves um, to get through a low rate period like this? Yeah, I think there's a few things, you know, um, certainly if you're out there rolling to slow down, take advantage of lower diesel prices and, and start to run much higher MPGs, but slow the trucks right down. Uh, still too many people are running way too quick. Uh, on, so cost, you know, conservation of cost is absolutely critical, minimizing deadhead miles, positioning your truck in the right market at the right time, uh, being patient, but this market will turn in Q3. It's, Q2 is going to be pretty rough. What I'd be looking for are what the market drivers are. I'd be looking at imports, exports, uh, in particular, things like produce season, we're heading into the, you know, the spike in imports through Mexico, through the Laredo and El Paso markets. Houston import volumes are up 11% year over year. That's why on the market uh, conditions index, you're seeing a lot more colour in those markets. Uh, you're starting to see some life in the produce markets in Georgia where onions are coming online, cherries are coming online in Fresno. So I'd be looking for you know, the things that we haul and what, what those markets look like, you know, what weather's looking like in certain markets, what imports, export volumes are looking like. And in, more importantly, which states are opening up based on the pandemic um, virus, and which, which governors, which states, uh, which scientists are telling which regions are safe to open up because some states and regions have been less affected. I expect freight demand will increase in those markets first and that's where the, where the trucks need to be, uh, operators need to be thinking about positioning their assets. 
Yeah, it's a great point about market conditions and how things are going to start moving sort of from south to north as the weather as the weather warms and produce ramps up. Um, that's about all the time we have. I really appreciate it, Dean. I think this is a great um, carrier forward per, uh, perspective that you were able to offer, um, and it was great catching up. So again, be safe, be sane out there, um, and I hope uh, I hope I hope you're doing all right through this quarantine. Thank you, Ken. All right, so um, hopefully that was um, informative to give you guys a better perspective on holistically what's happening out there and um, how the spot market works and how rates are determined. Um, looking forward, we're going to uh, turn over to Ned Damon, who's going to walk us through our forecast modeling projections for this week um, and what the model sees um, over the next month or so. Ned? Thank you, Ken. So uh, we're going to start off by looking at the predictions that we made back on 414. So this is a graph or a chart we refer to as our spaghetti chart because you got lots of little strands of spaghetti coming out. Uh, in the blue, you have the actual rate view rate. So again, because we made these model predictions on 414, you'll see that the rate view rate extends into the forecast region. The forecast region, uh, we have four separate models. We have our uh, rate cast model in green. We have our pessimistic model in red. We have a blended forecast uh, in yellow and in gray. Those are different blendings of uh, rate cast and the pessimistic model that, that kind of look at the data different ways. And we can see um, back on 414, the pessimistic model was the, the most accurate out of the bunch, where it was really, uh, it was even kind of underestimating the degree of the downturn that um, we experienced. Uh, but uh, when we move ahead to 421, and the spaghetti graph that we made on 421, uh, you can see that the predictions that we made on 421, the blended models were doing a much better job of, of capturing what was going on. Um, you can see that the uh, blue actuals line extending into the forecast region is very closely tracking with the uh, blended forecast, both the yellow and the gray. Um, so that was a, a sort of green shoot there. And then when we move forward to the 428 forecast, you can see that uh, we don't have any actuals in the forecast region because they haven't happened yet. But um, the rate cast model is predicting uh, flat rates with an uptick coming in in late May. Um, the pessimistic model is predicting a continued fall, but with uh, deceleration as it's uh, going forward, maybe bottoming out at like $1.10. And the blended forecast, which would be my guess for what is going to be most accurately describing the data uh, in this period, are uh, showing a continued slide, but with uh, it catching and stopping by mid-May. Uh, my guess is probably the gray line is going to be the, the best descriptor, although um, I'm really hopeful that with those loaded truck trends, we might start to see the rate cast model uh, perform very well. To wrap things up for this week, uh, we want to thank our guest, Dean Croak. Um, for, for joining us to help um, shine some light on the spot market. Uh, we want to direct folks to DAT.com slash COVID-19 for our full updates and any future updates. Um, and then if you have any questions or want a copy of the um, DAT Daily 50 Lane Report, uh, feel free to email us at askiq at DAT.com. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, we hope you have a safe week. Um, and you know, hopefully you're starting to enjoy some of that springtime weather. Thank you. Take care, everybody.